Praise the Lord. We are gathered this morning to worship and exalt our God. And we are gathered in our, in our homes, respective homes, and, and have fellowship with one another. And God is with us wherever we are. This uh, corona has separated us. But one way of looking at it is that uh, even though we are separated, but uh, all the talents are coming out from different people and children, and it is enjoyable. And also, that uh, he, somebody told that, uh, that you know, even we can sit at home and have fellowship with people, uh, how nice it is. And also getting up early morning, make uh, breakfast and ask the children to start and come and drive all the way to that uh, church is, is difficult when we are looking at it. But, but we miss uh, fellowship with each other personally, but the time will come that we will have that. And with Corona looking at that, has done something good and uh, talents are coming out and Enjoy people, we got less service to, together. I'll uh, ask my auntie to read uh, Psalm 103. If you have Bible, please turn with me to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost, inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always assume, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. Out of the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As the Father has compassion and his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortal is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. They blow over it and it is gone. And it remembers it no more. But from everlasting to lasting, the Lord's good and his righteousness with dare to be those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, who might to do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord. All his heavenly hope, you, his servant, would do this will. Thank you. Let us pray and commit this service into God's hand and his blessing. Father God, we have come as a people redeemed by you this morning to worship and exalt your name. What a joy this morning, Lord, this great God, God who the awesome God, the holy, righteous God, the God who has created the whole universe with your word. Such a God, you could come. The least you could do to worship and exalt your name and sing praises unto you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Our praise and worship acceptable before you. A sweet aroma in your presence, Lord God. Yes, Lord, as you 
Lord, uh, worship, worship, Lord, your presence. Till, till in every home, Lord Father. Thank you, Lord Father. Thank you, Lord Father. You are saved by your grace. Lord, every day we live by grace and one day we will be glorified by your grace and grace alone. Thank you, Lord Father. You are living on your promises. Thank you, Lord. We could come into your presence as we are. We can, Lord, we pray, Lord Father, for your word this morning. I pray for your anointing, Father, upon the speaker. And Lord, the word will be a great blessing to us. Let us not hear of your word, but also do us of your word, Lord. Thank you, Lord Father. Let Lord we pray for Sunday school, Sunday school children. And thank you, Lord, for the teachers. Yeah, Sunday after Sunday they're teaching the word of God and Lord this great responsibility you have given these little children, Lord Father. Beautiful children you have entered in your hands. That they may, Lord, as they hear your word, they may understand the love of God in their lives and come into life to you as they grow. And not one child will escape from the love of God. They pray and bless the children and teachers in the name of Jesus. They pray, Lord, for the tiny ones, Lord, Father. Lord, we miss them in the, in the sanctuary. Lord, they have some function to do that. Thank you, Lord, Father. And they pray, Lord, you honor that and you bless every little children, Lord, Father, because the kingdom is like little children. They pray, Lord Father, for the youth fellowship, young people. Lord, we pray wherever they are. Lord, we are able to conduct that, uh, Lord, youth fellowship. Pray, Father, for those who are involved, bless them and interact with them, Lord Father. They, wherever they are, they may be able to grow, Lord Father, spiritually. They pray, Lord Father, even though we are separated, Father, yet, Lord, we could be together in spirit, Lord Father. And how wonderful it is, Lord, the children and uh, young people also in different parts of this globe, Lord, able to Lord, join in this worship and in hearing your word, Lord Father. Thank you, Lord Father. Continue to be, Lord, that, uh, Lord, that we may meet together every Sunday and also have fellowship with each other, Lord Father. They pray, Lord Father, for this corona disease. Lord, traveling all over the world, Lord Father, the people, millions of people are affected. And they pray, Lord, even in India, is Lord, spreading, even in Bangalore, Lord Father. But Lord, I pray this morning that, Lord, you protect, Lord, your people, Lord Father, the doctors in CMC and other places, your children, Lord Father. Lord, protect them from this terrible disease, Lord Father. And also, Lord, that, Lord, we pray, Father, you have allowed this. With the purpose that purpose may be fulfilled, Lord Father, still to sustain, sustain us, protect us, O God, Father. And they pray, Lord Father, Lord, those who are affected, Lord, our dear ones, Lord, heal them completely, restore them, Lord Father, and protect your dear people, Lord Father, doctors, nurses, and our friends, Lord Father, from this disease, so that they may enjoy to their children, Lord Father. They pray, Lord Father, Elderly people will come to in their hands. We pray for Mrs. Moses and also Lord Benji's mother and the current sequence and, and other, others and including us, Lord Father. That you watch over us, protect us, Lord Father, from this disease and also, Lord Father, that we may enjoy good health because of your promise, Lord. Father. And also, Mrs. Bubar and also we come to in their hands, Lord. And Lord, this disease will not come anywhere near us, O God, Father. And Lord, make a edge around us, O Father. Pray, Lord, Father, that also, Lord, every day, Lord, we remember your promise and believing on your promises. Your promise are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Lord, the angels will protect in any fall. Not one bone will be broken. And Lord, Father God, we thank you, Lord, Father. We pray, Father, for those Lord, people who have gone all over the world, ones who worship with us, wherever they are, bless them, Lord Father. And they pray, thank you, Lord Father, in different parts of Lord, those who have gone there were able to, Lord, teach the word and also lead the worship and, and also children join, Lord Father, from uh, Lord, the different countries, Lord. It's amazing, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful 
Lord, this uh, technology that we use for the kingdom for your glory. Lord, the time will come that we will go into a sanctuary and worship and have fellowship with you and your people, Lord Father. The time till such time, Lord, bless our time together. Your presence be with every home, every Lord person, every child, every family, and also Lord bless every family, Lord Father. Thank you, Lord, you are God who is with us. If God is with us, Lord, we should be worried for respect for anything. Thank you, Lord Father. Bless this day, bless this service, bless the people today. As we come to service in there and giving thanks to God's goodness. Thank you, Lord. Every day we enjoy your presence and your blessing and your goodness and mercy. All of us, Lord Father, all the days of our life. Thank you, Lord. Come to service in there and we all glory and honor to your name. Hari Asadu sees in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Good morning, Church. It feels really good to see you all here having joined me along in today's worship at Peniel Tabernacle. I am Archita and I am going to lead today's worship and the theme is Waymaker. So why I have chosen this theme? So let's see what the scripture has to say about it. If we look into Isaiah chap uh, chapter 43 verse 15 to 16, it reads, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus is the Lord, which makes a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters. Another one from John chapter 14 verse 6, it reads, Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by me. Now let's see what the scripture has to say about God's promises. Joshua chapter 23 verse 14. Not one word has failed of all the good things that the Lord your God has promised concerning you. All have come to pass for you. Not one of them has failed. John chapter 8 verse 12 reads, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And the last one to read today is 1 John chapter 1 verse 5. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So you see, our God is indeed the way maker. He is the promise keeper and he is the only light in the darkness. He is who he is. Our God is is a beautiful God. So you must have experienced in your lives whenever we all seemed to be lost in the darkness, whenever it seems to us that there's no other option B, all the doors seem to be have all the doors seem to be have closed and we have got no clue what to do next, what lies lies ahead of us how we are going to face any situation at that moment whenever we kneel down in prayers and we surrender ourselves to God and all our things to God he comes with his style of finishing his things and he makes way out of nowhere and he not only does that he makes sure that he is glorified in our lives and he does that by honoring us yes our God's glory is the best honor we can ever achieve in our lives so uh, dear friends as we lead uh, as we uh, sing uh, the songs in the worship so first is uh, O Come to the Altar followed by Waymaker and uh, third is uh, Savior Like a Shepherd Leaders and the last one How Great the Art and Peace Perfect Peace so in all these songs let us not sing it just for the sake of singing but I would like to tell you that let's understand all, uh, the worth of these songs, the words by words, and let us surrender ourselves to God during this hour of worship. Everything that is holding us back, everything that is making us feel burdened and heavy today, let us surrender everything to God and enjoy in His holy presence. Enjoy His uh, um his miraculous works in our life enjoy the breakthrough happening that is going to happen in our life right now right at this moment so let's pray dear heavenly father god thank you for this wonderful hour of worship to which you all have brought us uh, together though virtually O oh lord but 
we all have gathered in your name today i thank you for this wonderful hour o lord as we continue to worship you o lord help us to glorify you to magnify your name to bring glory and honor to your name o lord we surrender ourselves to you o lord sanctify us forgive our sins o lord so that we will worship you o lord we will be led by the holy spirit and let this hour be an hour of confession of surrendering everything everything that is holding us back to today o lord of everything that is troubling us and that makes us think that there is no way lord we know you o lord who is the only way maker and we know and we believe that you are going to make breakthroughs happen and you are going to make way today for us O oh Lord, in Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. So let's begin with today's worship. Are you hurting and broken within, overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with. The precious blood of Jesus Christ Leave behind your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling For joy from the ashes, the new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, 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 oh. oh come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with. The precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, come to the altar, the 
the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. We make a miracle work, a promise keep a light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You wipe away all tears, you mend the broken heart, you're the answer to it all. Jesus, you wipe away all tears, you mend the broken heart, you the answer to it all, to it all, Jesus. You are here, touching every life, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, meeting every need. I worship you. I worship you. Thou 
Thou hast brought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast brought us thine we are. We are thine who thou be friend us be the garden of our way keep thy flock from sin defend us seek us when we go astray blessed Jesus blessed Jesus hear thy children when we pray Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear thy children when we pray. Early let us see thy favor, early let us do thy will. Lord, and only Savior, with thy love our bosoms fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, has loved us, loved us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou has loved us, loved us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou has loved us, loved us O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the laws thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior Sent him to die, I scarce can take it in That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing He bled and died, to take away my sin Then sings my soul, my sin Peace, perfect peace.
love runs far away. Jesus, keeping me safe and there, peace, perfect peace, with our future. Jesus, and we know when He is on the throne, it is enough. A struggle soon shall see, and Jesus calls us. So now that we have come to the end of today's wonderful worship, let's seek to God in prayers and thank Him. Dear Heavenly Father God, thank you for this wonderful hour of worship that you have uh, given to us, O oh Lord. Thank you for gathering us, be it virtually, O oh Lord, but you have gathered us by in, uh, individually by calling our names, O oh Lord. And I thank you so much. Lord uh, Jesus, I pray that may you continue to work in our lives. May our hearts be open for you, O oh Lord, at all times, even though the doors might seem to have been shut to us, even though it seems that we are in darkness and we are left clueless but lord we know deep down that you are at work in our lives even though we cannot see you a lord but we know that your holy presence is working uh, in uh, in our lives and you are fighting all our battles single handedly that we need not worry about anything for you are in control and you are fighting our battles and surely the day is soon when you are going to come and when your is your will is going to prevail and your kingdom will be established and that day O oh lord that you are going to open the doors for us O oh lord that no one can ever shut also O oh lord and you are going to make way for us O oh lord that such a such beautiful ways O oh lord that uh, which we would have never seen before all the glory and honor be to you O oh lord help us O oh lord to always worship you and glorify your name forevermore in jesus precious name I pray. Amen. Hi everybody. Ruel here. I'm sure the last time you heard of me is that I've caught the coronavirus. Well, that was three weeks ago. I was in the hospital for seven days and then quarantined for a period of two weeks. By God's grace, I've had no problems and it just felt like another viral illness. I want to thank everyone who prayed for me during this period. And also a special mention to my parents and my brother for all their support. A Manju ma'am, Prasad sir and Jiji ma'am. Um, though it felt like a little lonely all uh, at times, I've had the rest of the Sunday school gang with me to give me company, like Emmanuel and Avinash. And I've had plenty of time to read the Bible and study during this period, which is also good. I've... Um, grown two shades fairer and I've put on two more pounds of weight as well so it's not all bad so I'm going to go back to work now uh, I would like to thank the church for their support f uh, during this period thank you the Bible reading for today is taken from Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 to 6 my son do not forget my teaching but keep my commands in your heart for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. 
Here ends the Bible reading. Good morning, Church. Uh, it's it's my privilege to be able to share uh, today, and uh, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you for this privilege to come into your presence. And to learn from your word, open our eyes to listen, open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, and open our hearts to receive from your word, Lord. We commit this time into your hands. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. So, uh, for today's morning meditation, I thought we we could share, look at few verses from Proverbs, and uh, this is a chapter that's dear to all of uh, in my family because everyone is memorized some part of this chapter so I thought we could just look at few verses from Proverbs 3 uh, and I'd read it for you from verses 1 to 6 my son do not forget my law but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you let not mercy and truth forsake you bind them around your neck write them on the tablet of your heart and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. So this uh, passage starts with this verse, My son, do not forget my law. And we know Proverbs was written by Solomon. So probably David taught this to Solomon. And uh, Solomon recollects the teaching that his father gave and he writes uh, this verse and he says, My son, do not forget my law. Uh, every uh, first Sunday of the year, usually in Sunday school, I make the children do an exercise of recollecting the many blessings they received in the previous year and write it all down. And uh, Often you find the children struggling to remember the good things. You ask them what are the bad things and they would come up with it very quickly. But, uh, but when you ask them to remember the good things they received, they often struggle. And that's very uh, typical of all of us. You know, when we are, uh, our memory is not in, a, in, a, in the fallen man. Our memory usually remembers in the default mode. We remember all the wrong things. We don't remember the good things. And uh, here, David is telling Solomon, do not forget my law. If you look at uh, Psalm 78, and if you don't mind opening your Bibles with me and reading a few verses from Psalm 78, uh, you find the Lord rebuking the people of Israel. And it starts off like this. The verses, the Psalm starts off like this. Psalm 78, give your, O my people, to my law. Incline my ears to the words of my mouth. And then uh, if you look at verse 4, it says, Tell it to the generation to come. The praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works he has done. And this is talking about not forgetting the law and to remember the works. But as you keep reading, it keeps God keeps reprimanding Israel for forgetting the works. He says, but... If you look at verse uh, 7, he commands them and he says uh, that they may set their hope in the Lord, that the children would set their hope in the Lord and not forget the works of my God, of God. But he keep his commands. But in verse 11, it talks about Israel and says how they did not keep the covenant of God. They refused to walk in his law. They forgot his works. And repeatedly, if you go through that chapter, you would find that God reprimands Israel for forgetting his work, for forgetting the law, for not remembering, for not being steadfast, for not believing. And it recounts the mighty works that God did in bringing Israel out of Egypt and taking them through the wilderness and keeping them. And repeatedly it says they forgot. As New Testament believers, you know, there are very few uh, rituals that God's uh, Jesus has given us, you know, in the sense uh, there is a water baptism when we believe uh, in his death and resurrection and we confess 
Jesus as Lord that we are commanded to uh, obey. And there is one thing that Jesus said that we should keep doing so that we do not forget, that we keep remembering. And that is the Holy Communion, the body and the blood, you know, the bread and the wine that we take as Holy Communion. And I'm reading it from the words of Paul as he writes to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Jesus said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And later he took the cup and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as you drink this bread, eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. You know, there are two things that God says, Jesus says, do not forget, but keep doing in remembrance of me. The first is to remember his body that was broken for each one of us. I'm sure uh, some of us or uh, almost all of us would have seen uh, the Passion of the Christ where Mel Gibson uh, portrays the physical suffering partially of what Jesus went through. And that moved us. But if you look at the various Psalms, you know, you see how much he suffered, what, what he went through. In Psalm 129.3, we read how his back was plowed. In, Psalm 50, in Isaiah 56, uh, we read about how people spat on him. His beard was plucked out of his face and he gave his back to those who uh, persecuted him. If you look at Psalm 22, the Psalm talks a lot about crucifixion and what the Savior went through and you read about how they pierced his hands and his feet, how his tongue was stuck to the roof of his mouth, how his bones were all could be counted and how people put lots for his uh, clothing and they divided the garments. If you read Psalm uh, in Isaiah 52, it talks about how his face was marred more than any other person. And this whole suffering, why did, why was God, Jesus' body broken? Why was it broken? In Isaiah 53, we read again, Isaiah foretells about uh, Jesus and the uh, this is written almost 700 years before it happens. But if you read whole of Isaiah 53, it is about the crucifixion. And it says, He was wounded for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that made us whole was upon Him. By His bruises we are healed. By His stripes we are healed. His body that is broken, let's not forget and why should we keep this in remembrance? You know, because that did something for us. Just as the mighty acts of God redeemed the people of Israel from Egypt, His suffering on the cross did something for us. In Galatians 3.13, it tried, uh, Paul writes, what the cross has done for us. What the suffering of our Savior has done for us. He was that we are redeemed from the curse of the law. Because he was made a curse for us. You know, and we have received the blessing of Abraham. We were Gentiles, we were outside of the covenant. We were not part of that covenant that God had with Israel. But and the blessing was Israel's, but that blessing of Abraham has come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. And how God restored his presence, his Holy Spirit into our hearts so that our body became the temple of the living God. And how we have the Holy Spirit inside of us to speak to us, to guide us, to walk alongside us, to remind us of what Christ has done on the cross for us. The second thing that, uh, so if you go back and you read what is the blessing of Abraham, Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14 will recount every blessing that was given as part of the covenant. 
That's the blessing of Abraham that's come to us Gentiles. And you can read the rest of the chapter, and that is the curse of the law. And each after each verse, it's quite scary to read those verses. But after each verse, remind yourself that you have been redeemed from this curse because Jesus died, because of the price he paid on the cross. The second thing that we are asked to remember and not forget is the new covenant that Christ made for us through his blood. We have meditated on the new covenant, how it is a blood covenant, how it gives us absolute assurance of all that we have and who we are because Jesus died on the cross. You know, uh, God made a covenant with Jesus as a representative man through the shed blood. That was the blood covenant that God made with Jesus, the new covenant. And Jesus as a representative man is also the guarantor of the covenant. He's the mediator of the covenant. The, uh, the covenant gives us what we don't deserve. The covenant ensures that we have a relationship with God, that we are his bride betrothed to Jesus, that we belong to him. And every action of us, every, every word that we speak, every action of us needs to be dictated by the fact that we are part of this covenant, that this relationship that we have with God which cannot be broken. It gives us absolute assurance in uncertain times like this. And in Hebrews 10, 12, we read how this man, Jesus, went and sat down at the right hand of Father. Our representative is there at the right hand of the Father. And in Romans 8, we read how he makes intercession for us. He intercedes for us because we are part of this covenant. We receive grace that we do not deserve. And these are two things that, uh, that we should not forget, that Jesus tells us do not forget. You know, the body that is broken and the new covenant through his blood. Let us not forget that we are part of this covenant. What is our response? It says, but let your heart keep my commands. Let your heart keep my commands. Not our bodies, not our minds. But it says, let your heart. It's the inner motives of the counsels. Let me speak a little bit about the heart. You know, we know the physical heart. You know, it pumps the lifeblood to the rest of the body. It keeps it alive. Every resuscitation, whether it is uh, BLS or ALS or any life support that we do, is aimed at the heart. Our lifestyle, you know, we do so many things to keep our heart healthy. Cardio exercises, we eat a right diet, we try to lose weight, we take medicines which are cardio protective that protect the heart. We do so much to protect our heart. And the Bible says the spiritual heart is the place from which everything else flows. Just like our physical heart pumps life blood to the rest of the body. It says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. All the issues of life flow out of the heart. In NIV it says, guard your heart with all diligence. You know, above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. If you look at Proverbs 4, 20 to 23, you see the various uh, things that can affect or go into your heart, the various portals, you know, your eyes, the things you speak, the things you hear. And the word in Proverbs 4, 23 says, guard your heart with all diligence. Keep your heart with all diligence. So this heart is very important. You read uh, in the par parable of the sower, we read about how the heart is like the soil and the word is like the seed. If we allow 
soil to be left alone. You know, only weeds grow in it. But if we want a pretty garden like this, we need to work hard to plant, to water, and be diligent so that it bears fruit, it bears something, something beautiful comes out of it. Above else, guard your heart. And we later read that when there is judgment of our works, that it is the counsels of our heart or the motives of our heart that is judged. So how do we keep all the commands of God in our heart? How do we let our heart keep His commands? Paul gives us uh, some very simple ways to do it. He says, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Whatever you do, whether it's speech or action, do everything in the name of God name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever work you do, work wholeheartedly as though you're doing it for the Lord, not for people. So everything in life, whether it is eating or drinking or anything that we do, whether it's speaking or action or any work that we do, we do it all for his glory in his name, giving thanks to him as though we are doing it for him not for people. But let your heart keep my commands. So what is the effect if we do those two things? You know, if we do not forget the law and if we let our heart keep his commands, this is verse 2. It says, for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. We understand long life, you know, it's longevity or living for many years. But what is length of days? Have you heard people say, oh, I wish I had two more hours in a day so I can finish all my work? That is length of days. Where within that same 24 hours, you are able to do much, much more. You are much, much more fruitful, much, much more useful, more effective. Long life. You know, that word life means lively, to be active to be fresh, to be reviving, you know, like the green of the vegetation that's reviving. You know, that is life. And peace, that word peace means shalom, shalom. And that is to be safe, well, happy, in health, prosperity, peace, rest and wholesomeness. That's what God's word says. If we do not forget his law and if we keep his commands in our heart and from our heart obey his commands, we have length of days, life that is useful, life that is fruitful and filled with shalom. The next verse says, let not mercy and truth forsake you, bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. If you look at this combination of mercy and truth, uh, as fallen beings, you know, we are, if you look at people, uh, you have a set of people who are very merciful but not very truthful perhaps. And then there are some who are very truthful and hold on to the truth but there's not much mercy. But here this verse says, let not mercy and truth forsake you. If you look at the first verse where this word mercy comes, it is in Genesis 19, 19, and it is spoken by Lot as he is escorted by the angel out of Sodom before it is destroyed. The angel actually says, you know, leave uh, this place because I cannot destroy the city unless you leave. And that is the first place where this word mercy comes. It is a word which is often translated as loving kindness in our Bibles. And uh, in this, this word embodies mercy. You know, a man who made all the wrong decisions perhaps in life, but is still spared and is not destroyed with the city because Abraham, a righteous man, 
interceded to God for him. And it says God remembered Abraham. That's a picture of how God deals with us because Jesus intercedes for us. Not because of what we've done. Not because we've done it right or we've got it right all the time. And that is mercy. And if you look at where truth comes, it actually comes along with both these words, his mercy and his truth. And this is where Eliezer goes to meet, find a bride for Isaac. He goes on a long journey, uncertain of what is going to happen. And he meets, he makes a prayer and he actually finds Rebecca. And when he finds out that Rebecca is actually related to uh, Abraham, that's when he says this. He says, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not left destitute by master of his mercy and his truth. He remembers how God has been merciful and faithful because of his covenant with Abraham. And that is where this word comes. His mercy and his truth. That word truth means faithfulness. And often you find in the Psalms that it speaks about faithfulness. It talks about the word means stability, certainty, trustworthiness, reliability. And that is what we are asked to kind of keep. Mercy and truth. And we find that mercy and truth are two characteristics of God. Multiple times in Psalms you read about how his mercy is great unto the heavens, your truth to the clouds. When it talks about his glory, it says how mercy and truth are met together. It talks about God being plenteous in mercy and truth. That they go before his face. That his mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. His faithfulness endures to all generations. How his mercy is great above the heavens. How his truth reaches to the clouds. It's a characteristic of God. And you find in the New Testament how John writes, When the word became flesh, he was full of grace and truth. So this is what we are told. We are told not to let go of mercy and truth. Not just one, but both. And it says, bind them around your neck. Can be interpreted, okay, wear them like ornaments around your neck. And let them restrain you in every action and every word. Bind them around your neck. Let mercy and truth guide you in your every action, in your every word, in everything that we do. Let them restrain us even when we don't feel like it. Let them be as ornaments shining forth through our lives. And just write them on the tablet of your heart. Engrave them, inscribe them on your heart. Let them become part of you. Jesus says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let mercy and truth come out. Let them be part of you, part of your nature. And if we allow that, it says you will find favor and high esteem. Amazing blessings, favor and high esteem in the sight of God and also in the sight of men. And then comes the last verse. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You know, we lean on a lot of things, on our strength, on our degrees, on our job. But here, God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Have you seen a child go walking with his dad? You know, the child is not particularly worried about where they are going, whether they'll have something to eat, whether he would be safe. Nothing, because he just knows that the father has it, that the father is with him. And that's sufficient. And during these uncertain times of the pandemic, you know, this is what we are called to do. Just hold on and know that our father has got it. He watches over us. He gives us 
his provision he will provide he will protect and he is with us he we have a covenant relationship with him you know and so we can actually lean on him and not worry not try to figure it all out you know that's that's something that's causing a lot of angst that we don't know when this control that we have lost will come back to us we don't even know how long it's going to go on and this is a word for this season trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him acknowledge that he will empower you he will guide you he is your enabler he will be your portion and it says he will make your path straight and smooth that's what that word means he will direct your path he will make this journey that seems so uncertain and so complicated he will make it smooth and straight for each one of us when we trust him with all our heart and don't lean on our own understanding so just to summarize those words few verses again my son do not forget my law but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you let not mercy and truth forsake you bind them around your neck write them on the tablet of your heart and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of god and man trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path may god's god's name be glorified and i hope you are blessed let us pray dear lord our heavenly father we thank you for this day and time that you have given us once again in our lives so that we can come together as a church virtually from wherever we are to thank you and praise you lord for all your goodness for all your kindness and for all your mercies that are new every morning father we thank you for keeping us alive and thank you for taking care of us and taking care of our needs each hour and every minute we pray for pastor uncle and auntie we pray for the well being we pray for their health and we pray that you will take care of their needs father in this difficult times we pray that you will bless them abundantly as you have done we also remember the elders of the church as they are aging lord and are having various health issues we submit it into your hands so that they can carry on with their lives lord father we pray for the different ministries that the church supports the voice of the shepherd blessing youth mission navajivan seva mandal precious pearls and various other ministries lord that through them your kingdom will will reach out to the many and plenty We thank you lord for the online church service that you had given us and we thank you for the team which is responsible for helping out with this especially benji and gladwin we pray for the sunday school students and the teachers lord we pray that you'll bless them abundantly that they learn your word and refresh the lives lord father not to forget the youth of the church as they are able to meet online and to keep a fresh lord with your words we pray for the students especially who are taking up their exams or who have finished their exams we pray father that you will give them hope and strength we also pray for the students who are not able to go to college school and they are learning the subjects online we pray that you'll take care of their health and needs 
we also pray for the students in vit and cmc lord father we pray that you keep them safe wherever they are we especially pray for the pandemic situation in india and the world we pray father that we know that the cases of covid-19 is growing each day especially in our country and in our state tamil nadu we pray father that you'll provide recovery to all those who are ill and to all those who have lost their jobs and to all those who have lost the business we pray father that you'll give them hope to all the healthcare workers and to the staff who are sick lord we pray that with your healing touch you'll heal them and we pray for the various mission hospitals which are in remote areas providing healthcare lord we pray that you'll support them and encourage them with whatever limited sub- resources they have and we pray for the persecuted church around the world lord father we pray that you'll keep your flock together and strengthen them we pray especially for nidan and joel who are sick we pray that you'll heal them and so that they can come uh, they can come home and join the family we also pray for the small babies little babies who have come into this world jerusha baby anusha's baby and lin's baby we pray that you will provide them with a special protection and keep them safe lord we also remember people who are waiting for the life partners shona miriam sara dhiraj and kripa we pray father that in your time you will provide the right person in their lives and thank you lord once again to give us this opportunity to come to worship you and praise you lord father and we pray that you will be with us in the coming week and the days to come once again we submit our church and each member of our church into your hands in jesus name we pray amen Lord I want to thank you for this opportunity of praying for these dear ones who are celebrating their birthdays and marriage anniversaries in the coming week Lord we especially pray for Dr Pramila for her ministry in Chittur hospital and for her life for her spiritual life as well as her physical life we pray for her family and we pray Lord that you will continue to lead her and guide her in the coming year Lord Lord we pray for Jiblin as she uh, continues with her internship we pray Lord that you will continue to bless her in this coming year as you have been her guide in the past Lord be with her and help her during this time Father we want to commit little Mirabel into your hands we thank you Lord for this gift that you have given to Timothy and Sharon and we pray Lord that you will continue to bless this little one in the days ahead Lord that you will help her not only in physical growth but in spiritual growth as well master we pray for the other young ones and we pray for jeblin a john finney jessica joel we pray for all of these young lives and we pray lord that you will continue to lead these precious people in the coming days lord that you will bless them abundantly in whatever they do lord that they will seek your guidance in their lives and they will continue to grow in you each day father Lord we also commit those people who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries pra father we pray that you will bless them in a very special way and you will continue to lead them and guide them in the years to come i commit all of these people into your mighty hands in jesus name i pray amen to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence with our part with the joy the only god our savior in glory majesty power and authority with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you. Our transgressions bruised for our iniquities and the Lord would lay on him the iniquity of us all 
And God has said that it is the blood that makes the atonement for our souls. Lay the child in my arm. Father in heaven, I have sinned against you and against your son. Forgive me. I have petitioned you to relieve me of my affliction. Now I come to your mercy seat on behalf of this little one. Give what mercy you would portion out to me to this child who is dying. You who restore the dead and cleanse the sinner, shed your grace upon this babe. Grant him life, my Lord. I pray in the name of your risen Son. Amen. Surely, God will answer your uncle's petition. He, he gave up his own desires for the baby. Doctor, look, Sami is getting taller in his cheeks. His eyes are opening. He's gonna smile. Halda, take him to Naomi. She will gain strength when she sees how hungry her baby is going to be. Naomi is a witch and she is very angry. She is crying. And what happened? He isn't sick anymore. Did you heal him? No. Your grandmother brought him over and there wasn't anything we could do. Then Uncle Enoch prayed for him. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> and instead of praying for himself, he asked God to heal our baby. He did. Grandma, he's getting his mouth all puckered up. <laughs> We'd better go. Can I carry him? May Jehovah bless you. Grandma, he's so hungry, he's chewing my finger. <laughs> Enoch, look! Look at all the caravans returning to Galilee now that the feast is done. Uncle Enoch, do you think maybe well, everybody wants you to come back and do you suppose the Sea of Galilee would be especially beautiful right now? Ah, uh, our Sea of Galilee. Are you suggesting that we should close up our practice here in Jerusalem? and return to Galilee? It was just a thought. I'd, I'd hate to see you go, but I think you're near more up there. Do you suppose that maybe we could? Go back to Capernaum, back to the Sea of Galilee. Why not? I'm as good as I ever was. Look! Oh my! Jesus has healed you. Yes. Guilt can cripple a man and forgiveness can restore him. I have laid my guilt and my sin at the foot of his cross and accepted the forgiveness he has offered. His grace has no limits. I, for one, will never doubt it. Nor I. Tomorrow we will begin to plan for our return to Galilee. Alcus. If you have nothing better to do, you are free to join us. Would you be willing to do that? <laughs> yes, sir. I suppose Samuel would be hungry by now. <laughs> He's really going to live, isn't he, Uncle Enoch? Samuel's really going to live. For once, Michelle. I'm in complete agreement with your prognosis. Naomi's baby is going to live. And we are going back to Galilee.